righty, welcome on into the Falls Con Anywhere podcast. Charlie Turner, Chris DiCarlo, John Restino, all in the house here with you. Gentlemen, it is a rainy weekend here on uh, May 20th of 2023 here in Western New York. But, uh, you know, our show today, we're going to be talking about some legends of wrestling, of course. Uh, we lost a, a great legend of the wrestling business, uh, superstar Billy Graham, who um, there's no mistake in that, that gentleman there. He was just one of a kind, and we're going to be talking about him. We got some thoughts uh, from the Iron Sheik through the Sheik tweets about Superstar. And uh, Chris here, of course, has some um, classic clips of Superstar Billy Graham as well. So rest in peace to uh, Superstar Billy Graham, one of the true legends of the business. And guys, we'll definitely uh, talk about his career and, and um, his great, great career and uh, the impact you. he had on the wrestling world. Let me ask you something. Yeah, who did he influence other than uh, Jesse the Body Ventura, who else? Hogan, for sure. Hogan. Hogan. Oh, yeah. Hogan Here. even said that. Yeah, Hogan said he was the reason why he wanted to get into wrestling. Did uh, Triple, Triple H is a big, has been a big fan oh. and supporter of his over the years, too. Yeah, just uh, like I said, there, there, there was no, he was so distinct. I mean, once you saw him, you knew who he was. Like the, the colorful goatee, the, the huge build, I mean, the, the charisma. Everything about him was was great. So, yeah, we'll definitely be dis discussing his career a bit. Uh, but, guys, of course, we want to talk about uh, a little more of the recent stuff going on, uh, mainly with WWE. They got a big pay-per-view coming up next week. Um, and I know AEW it does as well. Maybe we'll get into that a little bit more next week uh, as that show is next Sunday. That's double or nothing AEW. But I uh, wanted to talk specifically about Night of Champions coming up. That's in Saudi Arabia, of course. Um, well, I shouldn't say of course, but it is in Saudi Arabia. You know, the interesting thing, though, this pay-per-view was supposed to be uh, king and queen of the ring and kind of like a king of the ring tournament and a queen of the ring tournament. They're originally supposed to do. But I think the thought process of being in Saudi Arabia, you know how that goes with the women there. It's a whole different set of rules. They, they just pulled the plug on that and ended up calling it the night of champions. Right, but, hey, he's been yeah. doing a Saudi Arabia once a year. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I want to ask you guys. And WWE following that money, you know. Let me ask you guys something. Um, you would both know better than me. I know, like, golf. Remember the live golf stuff, how much backlash they got? Anything on WWE or no? Like, do they get any of that kind of? Oh, yeah, at first, yeah. I mean, when, when that was rumored, yeah. um, a lot of people were just like, why, why? Why would you do that? You know what I mean? Uh, right. Why not keep it in the family? But – as we know now, they were sold to Endeavor, which owns uh, UFC. So thankfully, it stays here within the United States. And not that, you know, nothing against Saudi Arabia, but it just would have been weird. And, I, and there was some talk, too, because Sami Zayn is Syrian, I believe. He has Syrian blood. And there's a whole thing with Saudi Arabia and the Syrians. I don't know all that stuff, but. Sure. There's a huge chance, and, and, and there's a huge chance he would have quit the company if they would have been sold. But he is going to Saudi Arabia for the first time uh, to defend oh. the uh, tag, the undisputed tag team title. So I, I don't know what changed or if he's going to have heavier security. Oh. But that's that's an interesting thing there, uh, interesting element to that. So Syrian and yeah. Canadian. Yeah. yeah, that it'll be really interesting. That could be, that could be really good. <laughs> yeah. alone, just that connection well wow. they got maybe they, you know what they should do is play off of it like yes. you know, we were talking about this last week right like you know Sheik and nikolai coming into the ring and the russian mm -hmm. and iranian stuff and um it'd be great if he came in with a syrian flag he'd probably yes. be shot though i mean you're in another country you never know <laughs> it'd be great though oh my god i know only to bring back the good old days huh mm -hmm. oh man i know it I know it, but that uh, that card, it's an interesting card so far, and actually that's one of the big matches there is the uh, Undisputed Tag Team Championships, and it's not going to be the Usos uh, taking on uh, KO and Sami Zayn. It's going to be Roman Reigns and Solo Sokoa, as now there's some some major cracks in the, uh, the bloodline. Uh, apparently, Jay Uso was kicked out of the bloodline last night. I didn't see it. I just came across that real quick this morning. Oh, wow. I don't, yeah, I don't know if that's uh, all the details on that, but it looks like he was kicked out, and who knows where this is going to go. I have a feeling um, they're not going to win the tag team titles. I think it's going to stay with Zayn and KO, and I think it's going to continue to further to divide with the uh, the bloodline. It's got to come to an end at some point. Yeah, yeah, I I think uh, from what I've seen too, that that could be a crack in that tag match as well. So, also, I mean, 
Cody Rhodes versus Brock again. See, this, yeah, is, this, um, is where, this is where I don't get involved. I mean, how many times are we going to see this here? Yeah, well, this is their second time meeting, and I agree, Chris. It's kind of like um, after WrestleMania, it was almost thrown in there as like a distraction to keep you off, keep Cody out of the title picture. Um, you know what I mean? And just throw Brock Lesnar at him and, you know, see where it goes. But I, I am glad that they, they, did, they did have Lesnar put Cody over um at the last pay-per-view there he busted brock lesnar open too which was um pretty interesting stuff but um yeah I, we'll, we'll see where that goes i can't see lesnar losing twice uh to cody i don't know i'd be surprised if that happened misused brock lesnar right very misused he could have been after he beats the undertaker he could have been something special i think you know well, or- a lot of people are are criticizing triple h's booking of, of brock lesnar uh where mcmahon he used him as like a special attraction as a me but then that grew kind of tired i don't know if you guys agree with that or not but i, I was kind of tired of that shtick mm-hmm. you know um once he shed paul Heyman, and I, I love paul Heyman, but once he shed paul Heyman and he got on the mic more and his matches were weren't so dominant it was like the old brock lesnar from like the early 2000s where he'd have like long matches with kurt angle and whoever else and it wasn't just Suplex City destroys a guy in five minutes and it's over. And they kind of went back to that with Cody. So maybe they're going to continue that type of Brock Lesnar in his older age. I'd like to see that. I also like and, and uh, actually I've been supporting Trish on social media because uh, Becky Lynch and, and the man, I, didn't, I don't like it now. I didn't like it then. The only man when you talk about pro wrestling is the nature boy, Ric Flair, right? Yeah. Uh, Becky Lynch. So I, I definitely <laughs> support Trish Stratus, and uh, yes, well, I, both, I always support Trish Stratus. Oh, yeah. They're both she very was, good. She they're was both, here the other day, right, right across the bridge. Yeah, yeah, it's the key to the city, right, John? That's what you're saying. Yeah. the key to Niagara Falls. Yeah, in our city, we give the key to Smokey Robinson or God knows who. <laughs> yeah, good for Jim Diodati over there, the mayor of Niagara Falls, Ontario. Yeah, that guy deserves a lot of props for a lot of things. He sure does. But uh, yeah, no. Trish, uh, I, I, they're both good pro female pro wrestlers, but uh, I give the nod and support Trish. Oh, absolutely. Um, but I do like Becky Lynch. I think she's uh, she's a, she's a great wrestler, great uh, great on the mic. But yeah, we'll we'll see where that goes too. Uh, that's another interesting match as we got um, Trish and um, Becky Lynch going at it. And uh, that's, so, yeah, that, that should be interesting, too. But, yeah, the uh, if you can pull that graphic up, too, again, John, there's another match. Oh, the uh, – now, this, this, this match kind of has me a little bit worried because I, I love Gunther. And uh, Gunther, Gunther, whatever you want to call him. Yeah. He lined up to take on Mustafa Ali. Now, anytime they've had a, a show in Saudi Arabia, uh, Mustafa Ali has won, like, a battle royal there. He's won, like, big matches there to have, like, his big Saudi Arabian moment because he is yeah. Saudi. I have a feeling they're setting him up to win the title at Night of Champions. Hopefully not. Um, I, I love the run that Gunther's been on. And Mustafa Ali just kind of came out of nowhere uh, winning that battle royal. And now because it's in Saudi Arabia, they're just going to put the belt on him? I don't know. But uh, yeah. I, I kind of hope they don't. Uh, I I agree. I think I see that happening. But hopefully maybe a short time, though. Yeah, maybe just a quick uh, couple weeks with it or to the next paper, you know, just kind of carry it to the next pay-per-view. But I love that they brought back some meaning uh, to the Intercontinental title. And oh, I think sorry. a big part of that, uh, we'll get to that one. Sorry. That's the new world title, of course. No, you're good. But the uh, the Intercontinental title has, has kind of been re-elevated by Gunther. Um, it's been a long, it's, he's had the longest run this century. Uh, I believe the longest run since uh, the Honky Tonk Man. I, I don't know if that's 100% accurate, but I know it's been a long run for him. And, and the other thing, too, and this is what drove me nuts about the Intercontinental title over the, the past, like, recent years, was it always ended up being, like, one of the the like the free matches before pay-per-view. It would be, like, a preview match. Or it would always be stuck in, like, a gimmick match, like a triple threat or a ladder match or a battle royal. And now it's just back to one-on-one matches. And I feel like Gunther for as long as he's had it and now some of these matches just being straight one-on-one matches in the middle of the card like it used to be on the major pay-per-views it's brought back it's re-elevated that title in my opinion yeah I mean to me that Wrestlemania match could I mean definitely was was great I mean was a a showstopper there for sure 
Yeah, now that was a triple threat, but I loved it. Yeah, that was that that one made sense because you had um, um, McIntyre and Sheamus going at it, and then you know they were kind of fighting it out, and that was just three just three big bulls going at it for that match. They were just beating the hell out of each other, and people wanted it, they got it, and it was great. But yeah, now we're going back to a one-on-one match here with the IC title, which, um, like I said, I think it's just been. It, it used to be back in the day, you know, back when we were growing up. The Intercontinental title holder was kind of like the uh, the next in line for the world title. Like, at, you know, it was Bret Hart. He had it. And then he was elevated to the world title. You know, it was almost like it was the Macho Man had it. He was elevated to the world title. It was kind of like the stepping stone to the championship. And then it kind of went away from that for a long time. And I feel like it's back to that. Now, if Guther does lose it, I'd love to see him either in the world title picture or um, the undisputed title picture, which would be great. Yeah, speaking of which, that that undisputed match, I mean, that's a tough one to call for sure. Um, yes. I, like, I like them both. I think they both deserve it. But I, I'm leaning towards, yeah, I've liked AJ Styles since day one, since 2002, since I've seen him in NWA TNA. And oh, yeah. He is the phenomenal one. Yes, AJ Styles, great on the mic, great in the ring. Um, I've always been a huge fan of his, as I've always said on this show. I'd love to see him be utilized a little bit more. Uh, John, you can throw that title up there now. Um, but that was the this is the world title, the new world title they're going to be battling it out for. I absolutely love this belt. The more I look at this belt, the more it grows on me. When it, they yeah. first unveiled it, I was like, ah, eh, okay. But now it's just grown on me so much. Every time I look at it, I love it. I think it's a great belt. Um and we haven't seen anybody wearing it around their waist yet. I'm sure that'll kind of just um, round it out. You know what I mean? Just the, the whole look of it or out over somebody's shoulder. But it's a beautiful belt. Um, yeah. Yeah. AJ Styles, I would love to see it because he's, I think he's 44, 45. He's around our age. He's like middle 40s. And Seth Rollins, I know, is like mid 30s. So I'd love to see uh, AJ Styles get a quick run or not, or even just like a year. You can have him win it and carry it to WrestleMania or something. You know, I'd love to see him win it. Yeah, definitely. I think it's going to be a great match, guys. I think that's going to be – that could be the match that steals the night. I'm assuming that's the intended main event, unless they go with Roman Reigns as the main event. I'm yeah, not they sure. could go with that Intercontinental match, I bet you. You know True. I think Rollins is underutilized himself. I think I said this a couple times before. I just – there's something to – I've always – he's my – I'm a big fan. And I uh, – Oh, yeah. I like the way he – I said it before. He reminds me – he's got a little punk – there's something about him that makes me think that there could be, I don't know, it could be a little different. And I think yeah. um, maybe it never will be, but I think he's, uh, I, I like how he's you know, on the mic, the whole deal. Like, this is going to be a great match. What yeah. a bunch, what a perfect, I don't know. It's a good one. This is a good yeah, one. Yeah, oh, they, they line up, they line up great. It's going to be a great matchup. And yeah, I, I like the whole, uh, it, it, the other thing that has grown on me is the, the whole uh, Seth freaking Rollins uh, persona yeah. with like, kind of like that Joker mentality and, the weird clothes yeah. and, and the um, crowd going along with the music and everything. Yeah, he's just sitting there soaking it in in the ring. I love that shit, man. I think it's great. Um, so it wouldn't surprise me either if, if Seth Rollins wins the belt, and I would not be mad at that. I think he's got a ton of momentum right now. Um, and that could match, that match could go either way. That truly is a match that is a coin toss. Could have been there. There's a WrestleMania match and moment for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So. Very, very uh, good card there. Again, that's for United Champions. That's going to be uh, next Saturday, May the 27th, in Saudi Arabia. Um, WWE, uh, I think they just do that yearly now, or once a year at least now with Saudi Arabia. They're doing that show. But um, Night of Champions, that should be really good, guys. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. And, of course, we'll, uh, not next week, but the week after, we'll uh, recap it and uh, talk about the results and who actually did come out with the title. Uh, it should be interesting, guys. And uh, AEW is floating around with some news there of another show, AEW Collision, on Saturday yeah. night. Saturday night, bringing back Saturday night wrestling uh, for a two-hour time slot on TNT, though not TBS. And uh, still rumored of bringing CM Punk back in the AEW uh, scene. I, I don't know what's going on there. A lot of back and forth, though. Yeah, and the the AEW Collision. Uh, they they. Uh, copied the color scheme, if you will, from Monday Nitro, kind of like an homage to Nitro. So it's like a red and yellow logo, uh, like Nitro used to have. Um, yeah, that that should be good. I, it makes me wonder what's going to happen to Rampage. They got their lowest rating ever um, a couple weeks ago. They were under 
like 700,000. It was a terrible number. Yeah. Um, but they're in a bad time slot. They come on at 10 p.m. on a Friday night. Oh, right. And if you're trying to hit like a college demographic, forget it. And right. if you're hit, trying to hit my demographic, I'm dozing okay. off at 10 30. It ain't happening. You know what I mean? So, and, and of course, and they don't put like the elite, so to speak, the elite matches uh, on that show. It's kind of like the leftovers from Dynamite, if you will. So we'll see what Collision does. I think Collision is, is a good idea to put it on Saturday. WWE doesn't run a show on Saturday, so you're not going up against them. You can just kind of do your own thing and bring back that old. Saturday wrestling feeling, right? Especially like if it goes live for the two hours would be interesting. That would mm. be very agree. Cool. That would be that would be cool. Maybe they'll go to that eventually. Who knows? And uh, also but, a quick note, uh <laughs> since we're talking kind of up to date stuff here. I know the NWA Crockett Cup pay per view is uh the first week in June, June uh third and fourth. Uh very good. Now the Crockett Cup, Chris, that's been going on since they brought that back, right? Wasn't that like an old yep. 80s tournament, correct? Yep, that was uh, 86, 87, 88. And then uh, with Billy Corgan with the NWA has brought it back for the last oh. three years at least uh, as a pay-per-view once a year. So, Well, that's awesome. Okay. Yeah, interested to see. Uh... Now, NWA, they're mainly – uh, where can they, they're, they're on Fight TV, correct? They're on Fight TV. They're also mainly on YouTube with their show every Tuesday night, 6.05. Okay. That's something I, I don't watch enough of. I, I'll be honest. I haven't really watched a lot of NWA. Watch. Yeah, I need to check that out. I, I don't know. I forget. I got I to gotta mark it down because I'd love to see what's going on. I've never seen it. I've never watched it. And Tyra, it's, Tyra, it's, Tyra, it's, I like it because it's old school studio wrestling there out of Atlanta, Georgia. And then they do, they have pay-per-views every couple months. Yeah. Oh, then, that's cool. So yeah. the next one coming up is Crockett Cup, June 3rd and 4th, like I said. Also, uh, a shout out to our friend, Mr. Adam Parsons with the Wrestling Legends Network. Uh, if you want to check them out on social media, they're going to start uh, – uh, and end up blowing up an independent promotion and in studio wrestling. They're going to do a taping and then feature that. Um, so that's, oh, cool. that's interesting. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Hopefully we get uh, maybe Adam back on to uh, update us on that. That'd be great. I'm sure. And also we want to send a shout out to uh, Mr. Herb Simmons and the SCIW with their fan yeah. fest last uh, Saturday, May 13th was a great success there in St. Louis Missouri with a lot of legends and matches looked really good. Yeah. And congratulations to Herb Simmons. He received a, uh, it was like a lifetime uh, award while he was there. It looked like it was, it was set up by the, the guys that were attending the event and he didn't know it was coming. And uh, they surprised him with like a lifetime achievement award type of thing. So congratulations to well-deserved uh, congratulations to Herb Simmons, who uh, his contributions to the wrestling business are just, they're unmatched. Um, just a, a true, uh, like we, we always refer to him as a legend of the business, you know? Um, and yeah, Chris, the, the SICW event, if you guys don't follow the, the Facebook page, go ahead and, and hop on it. It's Herb Simmons, SICW. And there's a ton of clips of the guys entering the building. Uh, JBL, Bushwhacker, Butch. Um, Baron Von Ratchke. Baron Von Ratchke with the claw. Um yeah, I mean, just all, as they were filing in, Herb Simmons was kind of interviewing them real quick as they were going into the building, and they, they just had some great, uh, great little quick hit uh, interviews there. Very, Their very show cool is stuff. also on a weekly show is on YouTube too. So uh, SCIW put in under your search on YouTube, and you can see their weekly forty five minute show too. Ah, very good. Yeah, yeah, good stuff. So. Um, yeah, and, and also a shout out to Black Bart. Um, as, as those interviews were going on, JBL uh, had mentioned that all the proceeds of his autographs and, and what he was doing for that event was all going to Black Bart, who we found out through JBL in that interview had stage four cancer. Um, we are pulling for you, Black Bart. We love you, man. We, we loved having him on the show. And he was such a blast to talk to, man. When I called him before we recorded, it was so funny because there, there's no um, – he's Black Bart 24-7. And when I called him and I said, hey, Mr. Bart, he goes, hey, it's Black Bart. He goes, you caught me at the right time. I was just making a bull whip, so I'm ready for you. And I mean, it was, it was perfect. It was like, okay, makes sense that Black Bart's making a bull whip, right? So I just thought it was great. Great, great guy to talk to, and we're pulling for him. Our prayers are with him here at Falls Anywhere. 
uh, we're pulling for you, Black Barn, and uh, hopefully we'll we'll have some updates available uh, as we go because um, it's a great, great guy. Um, but, guys, why don't we take a break? We'll check in with our sponsors here. On the other side of it, we got some clips with the legendary superstar Billy Graham plus the uh, the Sheik tweets where he does mention Billy Graham as well, and we want to hear from the Sheik on that and, of course, our jobber of the week. So we got all that coming up after our quick break here. We'll be right back. Digits 988 can save a life. If you or someone you know is having thoughts of suicide or experiencing a mental health or substance use crisis, 988 provides connection to free confidential support. There is hope. The lifeline works. For 24-7 confidential support, just call, text, or chat 988. Welcome back to Falls County Anywhere Podcast. Charlie, John, and Chris all here with you. As we just got done previewing WWE's Night of Champions. If you missed that, go ahead and rewind it and uh, watch that. It was good. <laughs> uh, but no, we, uh, we're at our favorite part of the show here, guys, where we uh, check in. Speaking of wrestling legends, as we check in with the uh, legendary Iron Sheik and his weekly Sheik tweets. Of course, uh, Iron Sheik always has some unique thoughts on things. Of course, his thoughts on superstar Billy Graham. Uh, my brother for life. He was the champion and most over man in the business. He always showed me the respect. I love him. I miss him forever. And there you are. Uh, there's that picture there with Sheik and Superstar there um, uh, speaking. I don't know what they were telling. It's hard to pick up what they were discussing there when I watched the video. But uh, as you can see, the mutual respect uh, and the, the love that the Sheik gave there to uh, Superstar Billy Graham. Again, look at that goatee on Superstar, man. There's no mistake in that guy. Yeah, that's for sure. Whether he had the hair from the 70s, early 80s, or that, or the bald head from their 1982 on, I mean, uh, like you said, the charisma, the the art 20, 25 inch pythons. I mean, uh, the guy was great. Absolutely, absolutely. So a little love there from the uh, from the Iron Sheik. Ah, this one, you know, this one kind of made me sad. You know, the Sheik is, is 81 years old, and uh, he stated, you know, all my friends are gone, Bubba. I miss them all. This makes me happy and sad and fuck the Hulk Hogan. <laughs> <laughs> so we had to at least uh, squeeze that in there. But this was an LJN uh, tweet here. Somebody had posted uh, with Andre and uh, the Hulkster, the old LJN figures, um, Hulk Hogan and Andre the Giant. And these are ones that I've saved from my from my childhood. There they are, Paul Hogan and Andre. Um, I'm, they're going to have a match as soon as we're done recording. I, I have one <laughs> planned, and no, not really, but <laughs> of course. And a uh, and a shout out to the Sheik. There he is. You know, there anybody that's is. ever owned these, anybody that's ever owned these, the Sheik's pants just absolutely just did not last. Those things just peeled off 
So it's kind of like half naked chic here. Oh, um, even the mustache had seen some better days there. But uh, yeah, the old LJN figures, man, those were good times. And uh, somebody had posted that. But again, it was just uh, the this, this chic stadium that all his friends are, are leaving us, you know, and he's right. And it's, we're glad that we still got the chic here, guys. Definitely. Yeah. This one uh, here that I'm going to bring up, I, I don't know, man, what's going on. Yeah, what the hell is that thing? <laughs> the glower. When push when push comes to shove, put your bronies in the camel clutch. Yeah, well, uh, I don't know what the hell that thing is, but he's got it in the camel clutch, and it looks like it hurts. <laughs> wow, a, a type of gummy worm or something. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was glow worm from the past, but my yeah. God. I don't know. Something's got to go there with that for sure. Look, look at the ref. Holy Christ. <laughs> this is a circus that's funny <laughs> oh my god yeah i don't know what the hell that thing was and then there was one more i think there john yeah ah and then very simple in your spare time go fuck yourself and that's yeah. sound advice uh <laughs> sound advice for anybody these days yeah. anybody that's got any spare time go ahead and do that <laughs> good idea yeah no. yeah good idea <laughs> i agree with him <laughs> yeah he's the best oh yes. i love it Classic love hearing from you. Yeah, i love it and a shout out again to the uh, A and E uh, documentaries. If you haven't checked it out, they had a great two hour special there on the Sheik talking about his career, and uh, you know currently uh, how the Sheik is doing and all that stuff. So uh, very very good show. So thanks again, Iron Sheik, with the Sheik tweets. And uh, guys, let's uh, open up the vault, huh, Chris? Yeah, each uh, as we do try to each and every week here. For over a year and a half, we have our Classic Clips segment, courtesy of myself. They are my own personal collection. I do not sell them or trade them. We have a few each week to enjoy here on the show, and I believe in... Uh, Hold on one sec. Hold on, Chris, one second. I want everyone to think about that. It's been a year and a half, about 18 months, and you never run out. No, think right. Think about how crazy <laughs> that is. Through every week. We're at the tip of the iceberg. There's still a shit on the floor. We can yeah, go a light, we'll go a lifetime. Yeah, and, yeah, you know that. And then every day here I go, right? That's yeah. never ends. Excellent. Let me see if I can. We want to find your Billy uh, Superstar, right? Our first one should be in respect uh, to Superstar Billy Graham. Oh, well, I guess we'll go with this one first. No, I'll get it. I'll get it. I just don't have it labeled this week, unfortunately. Hold on. Oh, okay. I think that's that might be it. Here we go. In Japan there, okay. Japan, look at this. 1974, the superstar there with some wow. kind of uh, title. Not the WWF title, but some title there he's got in defending there in Japan. Wow, very cool. Wow. And here's a rare one, guys, from the Houston Territory, 1974 as well. Superstar Billy Graham. Look at they took the ropes off. And they did a whole arm wrestling. That's Superstar versus Ken Patera. Wow, look at Ken Patera. Jeez, I, I, I didn't wow. know that was him. Wow. Right. Because he didn't have the blonde hair then. Yeah. Oh, he's look at the uh oh. Uh oh. Ah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> the superstar wins, I guess, right? Two hands. Yeah. <laughs> oh, then they're calling him on it. <laughs> Here he is, uh, some Spanish uh, commentary over this, but this was the L.A. territory in the late 70s, superstar Billy Graham a part of. Wow. And these two both had matches all over territories. Oh, wow. Again, this was from the Houston territory. Dusty Rhodes defending a Brass Knucks championship, and they were able to use Brass oh, cool. Knucks in that match. Oh, that's cool. And a little modern there, uh, superstar Billy Graham towards the end of his in-ring career there with the ICW. Oh. Wow, very cool. Now he also, Chris, you mentioned the W well the WWF title that he defeated Bruno San Martino for, correct? Correct. Yes indeed. Until uh February twentieth, nineteen seventy eight, when uh Bob Backlund defeated him in Madison Square Garden. 
Ah, very good. Yeah, and you know, it's the influence that superstar Billy Graham had. We talked about it, um, you know, on Jesse Ventura, on Hulk Hogan, and then Hulk Hogan taking elements of Ventura and superstar and, and putting it into his character. Um, and even Hogan admitted he, he got into wrestling because of superstar Billy Graham. He wanted to be just like him, you know, the physique and the, and the look. And, and Hogan emulated it great. I mean, he, he's got that distinct mustache and, and like the, the bandana like uh, Jesse Ventura had. The huge arms, you know, um, so you could see the, the piece of the superstar Billy Graham in that Hulk Hogan persona. Absolutely. Yeah, I believe there was a shot of them together at the remember going back to the Slammy Awards uh, yeah. in uh, the end of uh, it was either uh, 1987. I believe it was uh, Graham and Hogan were on the stage there together. So that was cool. Very, very cool. And they were posing together, too, I believe. Yeah. yeah. Yes. But, uh, uh, we got two more. Oh, that was the superstar again. <laughs> a lot of false starting today, guys. Sorry. That's all right. Oh, my God. The false, rain. False start anywhere. <laughs> yeah. All, oh, my God. I got three already today. Let's see. Here we go. Here we go. I call this one rare Hulk Hogan, guys, which we see Hulk Hogan. Look at this. L.A. territory, the big ring. And with the apron on it, this was Hulk Hogan against Mike Masters. This was about 1981 down in the L.A. territory. No, curling, curling him up for the win. Nice. Of course, playing a heel then. Yeah. Now, was he with Terry Boulder in that match? Or was no, he... he was Hulk Hogan. Okay. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Hulk I mean, look right. at this, guys, too. We got Lord Alfred Hayes was the ring announcer here in St. Louis. Wow. This was, uh, yeah, look at Hogan's opponent, John King. <laughs> that was uh, Wrestling at the Chase. Speaking of Herb Simmons in St. Louis, this was Wrestling at the Chase. In uh, St. Louis, Missouri, the St. Louis Territory. And this was 1983 with the Hulkster. Kind oh, of between the AWA drop. and the WWF at the time. Wow. So, uh, to me, that these, this, these two matches and footage of Hulk is definitely very rare. Yeah, absolutely. All right, giving a little interview here. Showing off the pythons. Oh, yeah. Bang. The back souple. <laughs> of course, off the rope, dropping the big leg. Bang. That was quick. Wow, definitely, uh, yeah, definitely rare Hulk Hogan footage there to anybody that likes the Hulkster. You know, that vintage leg drop of his, um, you know, he said it took such a toll on him over the years. He ended up having to have multiple hip surgeries from that move. You know, when people talk about all oh, wrestling, you know, some people might say, oh, wrestling's fake. Wrestling's scripted, but it's nowhere near fake. Um, you know, you talk about the surgeries that Hogan has gone through, back surgeries, hip surgeries. Guys like The Undertaker have gone through multiple knee surgeries, back surgery. I mean, these guys, they they put their bodies on the line to entertain us, you know, and um, we respect the heck out of that, man, because Hogan back in the day even, man, just, you know, just as he was just figuring his own character out, using that leg drop for as long as he did, that patented and leg drop. All right, that was, he used that even before he we saw him in the WWF there, the end of 83, 84, and then Hulkamania started, as we know. So he was using even, it long before we saw. Even used it in Rocky Three, dropped one on that yeah. uh, that meatball Rocky Balboa, which was awesome. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so yeah, that was great stuff, man. Always uh, good to see some classic footage of the Hulkster there, who uh, we know the Sheik hates, but you know yeah. we respect the Hulkster. We love the Hulk. <laughs> yep, and uh, we got one more. Here we go, guys. Talking about a, a, a big guy that was agile in the squared circle. Some early footage, rare footage of Bam Bam Bigelow. Wow. 
Oh yeah, bam bam. And then here we see him a part of a devastating tag team. It was Bam Bam Bigelow, and there he is, Big Van Vader against the team of Doom from Japan. You know, it's so funny, Chris. I was just going to ask you if these two ever went at it because the size and agility of Bam Bam Bigelow and Vader. Did they ever have a match one-on-one -on -one together? Not that I know of, but we see him here in this tag team. That would have been a great one-on-one. -on -one. And this was uh, the UWF 1991 Bam Bam against Dr. Death Steve Williams here. Oh. And then here oh. he is again in oh. Japan. That vintage headbutt. Oh, yeah. <laughs> With the flaming uh, tattoo on his head. Yeah, that, uh, just destroying this poor guy here. Oh. <laughs> oh. You know, um, in Bam Bam, I, I, don't, I haven't seen a lot of it, but I know he spent some time in ECW and was pretty awesome there. I haven't seen a lot of that footage. I know that it's out that's on the Peacock Network, I'm assuming. But that'd be a good one to uh, to pull up today, maybe on a rainy day here. Go check out some old Bam Bam Bigelow footage. He actually was an ECW heavyweight champion, yes. Hmm. Yeah, good run there from what I understand. Yeah, I just, you know, ECW I was so back and forth with back in the day because you could only catch it at, like, midnight or, or something, a weird hour back then. And then once it became available on Peacock, I watched a little bit of it. But I know the other guy, too, and that doesn't really necessarily go back to, like, the 80s or anything, but. One guy that really excelled in ECW was Tajiri. Um, he had some amazing matches. Now, I did watch a couple of his. Tajiri just had some unbelievable in-ring ability. And he was kind of more used as like a comedy act in WWE, WWF. But, man, his wrestling ability was off the charts. So if you ever get a chance to watch Tajiri, uh, along with Bam Bam Bigelow and ECW, those guys had a huge impact. I mean, I would think Tajiri also uh, was good, but also copied like the great Muta. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There were some, definitely some elements of him. Yeah. Which, you know, it makes sense. You know, as guys come up, they copy some other stuff. And, but yeah, he had some, some great uh, in ring ability. Um, is that, do we have any more clips or is that it for the week, guys? Yep. That's it for the week. Good stuff as usual, guys. And like John said, we're just, uh, we just scratched the surface, man. We haven't had a, Oh. A repeat video yet, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> and I don't think that's going to happen. So, no, that's not under anything. my watch. No, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, good, good stuff as always, Chris. And uh, as we uh, wind down the show here, guys, of course, we got to check in with our uh, enhancement talent or our jobber of the week. And uh, this week it was Larry Ludden. Look at the haircut on this guy. Oh. Pretty decent shape, but needs a better barber. Um, Almost got that Greg the Hammer Valentine cut, though. Yeah, yeah, with like a little bit of a mullet. It uh, looks like my hair in tenth grade. Yeah, <laughs> it does. I'm sorry, it's unfortunate. <laughs> yeah. Larry Ludden uh, had a career record of 0 and 17. Uh, he he was active from 1991 to uh -oh. 1993. Here he is getting uh, kicked around by uh, Ric Flair at the time when he was brought in as the real world's champion. And as well, if you remember or not. He brought in that world title belt, the world championship, <laughs> uh, which was video distorted. Now here you could see a little bit of the distortion. What Flair did was he <laughs> went and grabbed the belt from outside of the ring. He the guy was already on his back, this Larry Ludden. So Flair just kind of like laid it over him, put him in the figure four, and tapped him out. But you could see the uh, video distorted belt there. Um, you know, it, it was very. You know, that was like the first, um, I guess, invasion angle, if you will that maybe not everybody remembers because the Scott Hall invasion of, of Monday Nitro is so epic, but you know, back when, and I don't know if you've seen the clip or not, maybe one of these weeks we'll, we'll pull it up, but it was uh, Jim, the Anvil Nightheart, Gorilla Monsoon and Bobby Heenan. They were on commentary for a, a wrestling challenge match. And at the end of the show, Heenan was holding the world heavyweight title. And then he dropped the name of Ric Flair and everybody was just in shock because he even he didn't even said like, well, he's under contract for another organization. WWF back then didn't acknowledge any other organization ever. So for that to happen, for another world title to come in to the company, for Vince McMahon to allow it, number one was huge, and to actually see it play out the way it did um, was was a very unique thing. Again, this was 1991, 92, a uh, 91 because this led up to the 92 uh, Royal Rumble that Flair won, but. 
it, it was like that first shock value for me. I was just like, wait a minute, I, I've seen that belt before. And then when he didn't mention Ric Flair's name, I just remember as a kid thinking, whoa, Ric Flair? And then the show went off the air and it left you hanging for next week, which was the magic of WWF back then. But man, very yeah. cool time in the business. You are definitely right, Charlie. That's kind of how it started there in 1991. And then they brought Flair in on primetime wrestling with the whole, uh, he had the, the tights and the robe on with Bobby Heenan, and then uh, the rest was history. Yeah, good old Larry Ludden there, getting his uh, butt whipped by Ric Flair on Wrestling Challenge. So uh, shout out to Larry Ludden for taking a good beating there and uh, submitting to the uh, figure four leg lock. But yeah, I just thought that was... Uh, that's good. Very cool. Yeah, very, very cool stuff, guys. Well, uh, okay. Yeah, I think we're going to start to like roll. To, uh, John, why don't you bring up, we'd like to, of course, thank our fans all across our platforms each and every week here on Facebook, our home. Of course, yes, our YouTube is up to uh, 52 or 54, I understand. We need to get to 1,000, though, but we're working on it here. We appreciate everybody. Friends with the Z. Media Network, you can uh, catch not only this show, but John's other show and his sports show, Spitballing, uh, just great and growing. And also our Twitter is at Count Anywhere. And, of course, we're still on Spotify, which is growing, and uh, hopefully we can grow it even more this year. And also, John, tell our fans about the uh, Facebook stars. Yeah, as you're watching the show today or anytime and you see the – Message will come up about Facebook stars. If you um, spend 99 cents, you'll send us 100 stars. The 100 stars accumulate enough on Facebook, then that gives Falls Count Anywhere and the rest of the shows an opportunity to get advertising on Facebook. So 99 cents gives us 100 stars. The 99 cents will go directly to making us bigger and better and just being more modern or whatever we can do with our programs. Um, because we are a little podcast, really, when you think about it, what we are, we're not a huge network. And that's what's incredible about what, what the three, you know, we've been able to do. We've been able to get all, it's amazing how many followers and how many things we have going on. So if you see it, 99 cents, that's all it is. And uh, the stars are a big deal to get us uh, advertising on Facebook. Thank you. Awesome. Good stuff, John. Absolutely. And um, we, yeah, we appreciate everybody that checks us out and uh, leaves comments or clicks the like button there. We uh, we certainly appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, and again, we always like to say we're a show of the people. Uh, John, do you have any uh, public service information here to give to uh, anybody watching here that might need it? Yes, I do. Um, this week, hold on, let me bring it up. We're going to talk about human trafficking, and that's 888-373-7888. That number is highly confidential. I mean, you don't have to say anything other than what you see. They won't call it. There's no, you just, it's very confidential. See something, say something type of thing. Human trafficking, no matter where you live, it doesn't matter if you're on a border city or if you're in the middle of the country or if you're in the middle of Canada, it's happening because, you know, if you find places, for example, um, you know, massage parlors, those types of things in your area, um, some different restaurants and stuff. A lot of that has a lot of human trafficking going on. And then let alone ch child trafficking. Yeah. And uh, it also ends up being the sex trafficking stuff. So if you can, if you see something, 888-373-7888. They're not going to ask you anything but what you know, what you've seen, and then they'll take care of it. So if you see something, you might save a lot of lives by just calling that number. Absolutely. It's a crazy world uh, we're living in these days, guys. And uh, any information we could give out to the public here, if we weren't aware of it, and we were at least making one person aware of it, yeah. uh, the mission accomplished, hopefully. So, yeah, thanks for that information there, John. Uh, but, guys, yeah, as we keep rolling into the uh, month of May here, as we get into next week, again, we will um, we'll touch a little bit more on WWE's pay-per-view. I'm sure the storylines will develop over the next week. And, of course, we'll get in a little bit into AEW uh, as well. But, uh, guys... Uh, another great show this week. Yeah. Appreciate uh, the footage that Chris provides and, and uh, the production work that John and, and Robin does with the sharing and, and all that stuff. So it's, uh, you know, it keeps us running smoothly and, and uh, look forward to doing it every Saturday, guys. So appreciate it and appreciate everybody checking us out. That's right. Thank you. We definitely appreciate it. Absolutely. All right, guys, take care. Have a great weekend, everybody, for checking us out. Thank you very much. Have a great weekend as well. And we'll see you next week.